It's the Blue Jays this week, video podcast, vodcast, whatever you want to call it. Ben Ennis and Mike Wilner in Tampa as the Blue Jays playing the Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, four game series and and Mike I gotta ask you about beautiful beautiful Tropicana field it just looks spectacular no but on uh, seriously uh, I, this I is your, wish this is your your first season where you've actually traveled with the team and you're getting to see all these new ballparks yep. um you've already seen Oakland well I guess not this season but you have seen it compare the two is this the worst ballpark in uh, in the majors it's it's a tough comparison yeah. to do. I have to, first of all, we're in St. Petersburg, not Sorry. in Tampa, and that's a whole big thing down here. They want to build a downtown ballpark in Tampa that's actually nice and people might come to. Uh, but uh, this this is, I mean, the you're seeing behind me the, the outfield wall, and it's kind of nice, and over down there there's a, a little fish tank with a couple of rays swimming around in there and scoreboards in right center where DJ Kitty comes on and stuff. But, I mean, <laughs> uh, looking up, just at the, this like circus tent white roof and yeah. the concrete the walls in the back of it. It's just, yeah, and the stupid rings holding the roof up that get in the way all the time. It's it's just not a nice place to watch a baseball game and, and certainly not helped by the fact that nobody ever comes here to watch a baseball game. Yeah, my favorite ring is ring D, the Homer uh, ring. I love that one. But the, the, I can't believe they still have the manta ray tank. You can actually like pet a ray out there, can't you? Yeah, you can. I wouldn't you want can, to. They're yeah, swimming around in there right now. Don't remember Steve Irwin? Like, honestly. Have you gone out there? Well, they're not stingrays. I don't oh, think okay. they're stingrays. What's the difference? I'm not sure. I'm not up on my You can my go to the Tampa Aquarium and pet manta rays, too. All right. It's perfectly safe, I, I believe. Do you want to talk about baseball? Let's, uh, because this is nominally a baseball vodcast. Let's talk about that first game of the series on Monday. Blue Jays down 7 nothing. One horrible inning for Mark Burley. Come back dramatically down to their last strike. J.P. Aaron Seabia with the two-run homer. They win it 8-7. There's been, I don't know, I want to say three, maybe four games this season where I thought maybe would be jumping off points for this team where they would go on a, a crazy stretch of, of wins because they just gained so much momentum from, from big games. There was a five-run comeback in Detroit. Nothing like the seven-run comeback in Tampa, which has been a, a house of horrors for them in recent years. But... Is this maybe finally the game that's going to kickstart this team? Well, maybe Sunday was, right? I mean, maybe the, this is just part of that whole kickstart. And, and you're right, that comeback in Detroit, down 6-1, and they won that game. The, the Baltimore game where they were up 5-2, blew that, almost lost it in the 10th, and then won it in the 11th. The Red Sox game where they beat Boston 9-7 to start the last homestand, I thought those were all going to be kickstart games for this team and, and would really get them going, but none of them did. I mean, after the Red Sox game, they lost the next four straight and scored three runs. Yeah. But that game on Sunday, against Boston kind of was you, you kind of felt the same way hey maybe this is going to be against Seattle maybe this is going to be a jumping off point it was a game where they pitched well they played defense well they hit well they they had a big inning after Seattle had their kind of uh, comeback inning against Brandon Morrow and Seattle was kind of kicking the ball all over the field too they lost three balls in the sun all these things that the Blue Jays have been doing all year now the opposition was, and you thought, well, maybe there's a jumping off point, and they're down 7 to nothing in the third inning of the next game. But they came back and won that game. So, you know, maybe maybe things are starting to turn, and, and we won't know for a couple of weeks yet, but mm -hmm. certainly these last two games have been as good as anything they've done all season. I don't know how you, you feel about momentum. I have a, an idea that you probably think like most people that momentum's only as good as the, I don't as, feel you, about yeah, momentum. you don't feel about it it's only as good as the next day's starting pitcher is the, the old uh, old saying not but, even okay it's not even that okay it doesn't exist I should there's even no say such it. thing I'm sorry it, uh, it exists it exists but there's no game? carryover from game to game okay but inside a game it I exists. think in game but it, but it, it can well, yeah, momentum is a thing, and you can feel when a team scores a bunch of runs, but then all it takes is the, the next guy on the other team to lead off the inning with a rally-killing home run, and there you go, your momentum is gone. So I think it exists, but I think it, it, it can switch in a heartbeat. Uh, but what about in a sport like baseball? Yeah, in, in, in those other sports football. where you can actually take the ball away from the other mm -hmm. guy, those sorts of things, then, yeah, momentum means a lot more. I tend to think that there is such a thing as offensive momentum, and this team just had nothing going offensively for the beginning portions of the season, although we're still in the beginning portions. But maybe the offense has started to, to gain a little momentum. They're scoring runs. The bats uh, are, are uh, a little more confident. Do you believe in that type of momentum? 
I think hitting is contagious mm -hmm. and can be contagious, about. and I think a lack of hitting can be contagious too. Yeah, uh, but you know you have to look at what without trying to take a whole big um, draw a whole big conclusion from just a couple of games because in the four games prior to these two wins, the Blue Jays scored a total of three runs. In the two games since, they've scored 18. So, you know, you see how delicate a balance that is, that it just went from nothing to incredible, and it could very easily go back to nothing again, though you hope that it won't. Well, one of those guys that was a key part of the incredible, J.P. Aaron Seavey, he is the subject of our Ford Leaders in the Field. Ford Leaders in the Field. Presented by the 2013 Ford F-150, Canada's Player of the Year for 47 years running. So yeah, let's talk about J.P. Aaron Sebia. The offensive numbers as far as American League catchers are pretty ridiculous. He does lead the American League in home runs and RBIs. The on-base percentage, not quite, Mike. He is dead last among qualified hitters uh, in the catching position at uh, an on-base of 267, which is, I mean, to put it, pretty uh, obviously is atrocious but when you're slugging and hitting home runs and driving in runs I guess it's something you can uh, you can deal with you can absolutely live with that especially out of your catcher the issue might be here that he's the number five hitter and you don't want a 260 on base percentage out of your five hitter because if he doesn't hit the ball out of the park you'd at least like him to leave something for the next guy to do uh, or to be on base every once in a while for the next guy to drive in so yeah the on base percentage and the batting average is definitely an issue but what's interesting about JP and we talked about this I think on our first uh, audio podcast of the year is that he's a unicorn I don't have the numbers in front of me but he is one of these mythical creatures in uh, in baseball who actually is a better hitter so far in his career a yeah. significantly better hitter with runners on base than without have you told him that he's a unicorn yet because I feel like that's something you should let not. him know about you should let him know. I, 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 we've talked about the whole runners on base thing, and, and he says the same thing that every other guy is. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I clutch up. Put a little bit more uh, concentrate, a little more focus. I want to drive that run in. Everybody says that. Nobody actually does it <laughs> except for him. Uh, so, so it's a, a weird thing. Last I checked, his career OPS was over 100 points higher with runners on than with the bases empty. Which makes sense when you're a unicorn. I don't know if, uh, if you've seen this tweet. It's a pretty good one. Sam Miller tweeting uh, on, on Tuesday that J.P. Aaron C.V. is slugging percentage at 542, twice his on-base percentage at 267. Nobody has ever done that ever in the history of baseball. Only two, Matt Williams and Javi Lopez, have ever done 1.8 uh, times uh, their on-base with their slugging. Have you seen that? I mean, I, I can't imagine he, he'll be able to continue that. That would take a lot of slugging. Even with as terrible as an on-base as he has, he would have to keep up the slugging. Is that stat as amazing to you as it is to me? Well, I mean, it's because he's a unicorn, right? Yeah, I mean, they can do can. things that other ordinary <laughs> people can't do. Uh, well, it, because it they're not people really, at all. Um, yeah, exactly. That other ordinary mythical creatures can't do. Um, it's it's a surprise for sure. It's tough to carry a slugging percentage that high with an on base that low. And generally, too, let's not forget, um, most hitters walk a lot more than JP does. Mm -hmm. So you have a batting average that's even that much lower than the on-base percentage, which makes it even tougher to carry that whole slugging thing. Um, with him, his, his batting average is basically going to be the same as his on-base percentage, so all he has to do is average two bases for every hit, and he'll be just fine, and, and he'll be able to accomplish this thing that nobody's ever done before. But we've just hit the 20% mark in the season, which means that he's on pace to hit 45 home runs, and that's highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. But he's also on pace to strike out about 250 times which is equally unlikely so I think things will normalize I think you'll probably hit 30 but you have to remember too that catchers tend to wear out as the season goes along and JP has caught uh, every game but seven I think this year for the Blue Jays he started every game but seven so uh, they're, they're gonna have to give him a bit of a blow every once in a while if they want to be uh, see him be able to continue to hit this way yeah, but they don't really need to give him a rest if he's a unicorn, which he is. So that's good. Uh, Mike, enjoy St. Pete's. That's another thing. E enjoy the trop, the beautiful trop. Uh, you can follow Mike on Twitter at Wilderness590. You can follow me on Twitter at Bennis Follow our uh, podcast as well at Jays This Week. Audio and video 
everything. We'll do it every week. We'll see you next week.